Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to the Restoration Couple. Today's rather spontaneous video is, uh, is sponsored by Mother Nature because we've been getting a bit of snow and tomorrow we're getting a load more. So we're going to try and build some sledges from some old pallets. So stick around and we'll give it a go. So here in the UK, we do get snow, but down south we don't really get it enough to cause an issue. But when we do get it, it's it all havoc breaks loose and everything shuts and it's the only thing that's talked about on the news. And uh, So the school is most likely going to be shut tomorrow or probably from lunchtime today. So that means we've got to do something tomorrow with the kids, which is great. But we haven't got any sledges or toboggans or anything, and I just can't bring myself to buy any more tacky plastic um, so we're not going to go and buy any and we figured we've got enough scrap wood everywhere that we should be able to make something haven't got any plans haven't got really much of an idea what i'm doing but hopefully we can knock out a few of these sledges and have some fun tomorrow i'm going to go outside i think it stopped snowing just about and see if i can dig out some of the pallet wood which i split up last year and then we can make a start I had a delivery of pellets for the boiler yesterday, so everything's in its, well, everything's just uh, where it shouldn't be. I'll try and clear some space. I think we can get by with doing most of this on the table saw. I just checked that all that pallet wood's really gritty and it's got sand and stuff from, you know, all the stone and everything arrived in it years ago, so I don't really want to put it through a planer or anything like that. We'll just sand stuff and I'll use the table saw because I need to use, uh, to change that blade out anyway. I think a lot of these traditional sleds are kind of steam bent at the front so the skis bend right up but you know we've got about two hours and we've got some old pallets so we're not going to be doing that but I reckon if we ha add on a little bit more uh, we double these up then we can have a bit more of a curve at the front. So the first job was to clean up each side of these long sled pieces that would help with the glue up but also give a cleaner side to run on but of course you could do all of this with hand tools and jigsaws if needs be. I'm not sure how well you can tell how cold it is in here, but it's um, it's below freezing in the garage, even with that boiler going. I think it's about minus six outside. Anyway, we're struggling now because I haven't really got a plan or a design to go to. I was thinking just really keep it simple, two of these ski runners, but of course that only really gives you this much clearance from the snow, which is not going to well, it might at the moment, but as soon as it gets a bit deeper, it's just going to... Well, we'll be making a snowplow. So then I thought, well, I could double these up to give me a bit more clearance. But then, you know, the weight, these things would end up at about 10, 12 kilo or more. By the time we got two of these and then the supports, you know, and, and uh, something that heavy hitting another kid, probably not that clever either. I could have probably done all of this in plywood to keep it lightweight. Ah. No, let's sit with pallet wood. Be resourceful. Upcycling. I'm going to try and stick to the idea of having one of these either side, and then we'll just do a raised section before the support at, on each support, if that makes sense. So from there, I cut all of these long pieces down to the length of the sleds and although the, sl the individual sledges could be slightly different I wanted to make sure I had a pair of everything to keep things symmetrical and even. And then I kind of sketched out where I thought the support brackets should be and they would be notched to receive those. That way I could make them in an arch to give much more clearance over the snow. I made sure I did all my square cuts and my notches before I cut the curves. It was much easier to sit on the bed of the cross cut sled that way and kept it all even. 
and again I paired things up to make sure everything was symmetrical. It was then over to the bandsaw to cut out the riser sections and with these, I mean this bandsaw is pretty much as small as they come and it was a bit underpowered and a bit of a blunt blade. Uh, so one day we'll upgrade, but for now I was just looking for a symmetrical pair per sled. Next job was to use some of the pallet slats to make the cross members which would give an arch which would just offer a bit more clearance over the snow. So they were cut out and there were three of those per sled. Then the front of each of the skis were rounded off as well and then I went about cutting and squaring off the cross members which I hadn't done yet. So that was just to make sure that they all sat the same depth. Oh my goodness it's cold. The bulk of the sanding done, I then flipped over and clamped the sander. I'm sure this isn't advised and you want to be careful because the discs can fly off so make sure you're wearing eye protection but this just helped with the rounding over of all the edges and one day we'll get round to getting a bench mounted sander but for now this did the job. Well I think that's our parts pretty much sanded. The only bit I need to do, I'll probably just do it by hand, is in the curves here. We could do it on the drill press, couldn't we, actually? Look, the two skis, I hadn't sanded all of them off because I kind of like a little bit of the texture there, but they're completely smooth. And I'll take a bit of linseed oil or something. So it's a bit of a mock-up. There'll be the two skis like that. There will be the little kind of risers glued on each one. I haven't got enough clamps, so they'll just be glued and screwed. Then up front, there's just gonna be a little bit of an extension piece, like that. Then these sections, which kind of just offer a bit more clearance, will go and slot in there once they've been chiseled out a bit more. Uh, and then the final slats will go that way. Right, we're against it now to get it all finished and dry because uh, it'll take a little while for the glue up. And um, I'm gonna do all that inside because the kitchen or the house is much warmer and I'd rather use glue and everything in there and the girls can probably give me a hand doing it as well. Girls? Eden? Faith, who wants to build their own sledges? Come on then. See that? See how they slot in there? Right, we're on the night shift now to get this finished. Uh, as you saw, the assembly went to plan, so everything's interlocked like a flat pack sledge, I guess. 
uh, and it's not going anywhere. It's nice and kind of, it's not racking in any way, but uh, I think having the slats on top is going to help strengthen it even more. So I've cut those, they're all sanded now. They're going to go on there. I need to pre-drill those. And then I've just done a kind of foot piece which will hold the top the skis at the front together. I think I'm going to do this bit by eye. I'll find the centre, but apart from that, you know, uh, everything else has been cut freehand on the bandsaw, so nothing's quite perfect. So I kind of like that, it's a bit more authentic. Oh, there's too much stuff going on in here. Uh, apart from finding some rope, we're pretty much there, I think. So we need to sand it a little bit. Uh, just take off any of the last rough edges and any of the pencil marks. And then I think we'll probably go through here and here with the, the rope. I thought I had some around here. That's a bit modern looking, isn't it, bungee cord? Oh, I'm such a hoarder. That's more like it. A bit dusty. Bye. 
Wait to the bottom.